All right, so this is the final week in our series, uh, The Scandal of Grace. If you've missed any part of our series and you want to catch up, you can go to our website at clcgrace.org, go to the Messages tab, and you can catch up with this series or any of our past series. So our title today is, How Does Grace See? So how does grace see? How does grace see others? Well, to answer that question, we have to look through the eyes of grace. We have to look at this world through the eyes of Jesus, the author of grace, the source and fountain of all grace. So how does grace see others? Well, in our text for today, um, Luke 7, Jesus comes to Simon's house, not Simon the disciple, but Simon the Pharisee, comes to his house on invitation uh, to have dinner. And so they're, they're having dinner, and in walks a woman. Right? In walks a woman, Luke tells us, quote, a sinful woman. Right? And Luke doesn't tell us explicitly that she's a prostitute, but uh, whether through tradition or whatever, we've come to believe that this woman is probably a prostitute. And she comes into Simon's house. And that's how Simon sees her. Simon sees this woman as a prostitute. Simon sees this woman as somebody to be used, but not associated with. Somebody unwelcome, somebody uninvited, a sinner. But that's not what Jesus sees. Jesus sees her differently. Jesus sees her through the eyes of grace. And Jesus sees a woman who is longing for an invitation. An invitation not to be used, but an invitation to be loved. An invitation not to be seen as a sinner, but to be seen as a daughter of the king. This is how grace sees. This is how Jesus sees. In Mark, we're told of a man who's in pain. He's chained by his demons. He's no good to anybody. He's a sinner. That's how the world sees him. Jesus sees differently. Jesus sees somebody who is hurting and in pain. He sees somebody who is longing for freedom, longing for purpose, needing healing. So Jesus sets him free. He brings him healing by setting him free, and then he asks him to join him in his kingdom work. That's how grace sees. Zacchaeus in Luke, 11, uh, Luke 19. Zacchaeus, we're told, is a, a wealthy tax collector. And by wealthy, I mean like stinking rich. Zacchaeus is a stinking rich tax collector, right? He's got, he's got everything he can hope for. He's wealthy, He's also seen as an enemy of the people. He's a traitor. He's somebody to be shunned. He's a sinner. That's how the people see him. Jesus sees him differently. Jesus sees somebody who's lonely. Jesus sees somebody who who needs a friend. Somebody sees somebody who Jesus sees somebody who is hurting. Jesus sees somebody who needs to know that they are loved for who they are and not for what they have. That's how grace sees. In John's gospel, John tells us uh, of a woman, she's out collecting water in the heat of the day. I mean, really, who collects water in the heat of the day? No one collects water during the heat of the day unless you're the town joke. Right? Unless you're somebody to be talked about and not talked to. Unless you're a sinner. That's how the town sees this woman. That's not what Jesus sees. He He sees somebody who's been hurt and lonely. He sees somebody who's in pain. He sees somebody who needs help. He sees somebody who just needs to be accepted. Jesus sees a woman not at her worst, but what she's worth. This is how grace sees. In his gospel account, Matthew tells tells us the story of a man uh, with leprosy. A man cast out from his family and his friends. A man who is made to live in isolation. A man who has no hope. He is untouchable. To die. A sinner. That's how the people see him. But that's not how Jesus sees him. Jesus sees somebody who needs to know that there is hope. Jesus sees somebody 
who needs community. Jesus sees somebody who needs the touch of humanity. Jesus sees somebody that the hand of grace needs to reach out and touch. This is how grace sees. Jesus sees this world. He sees people. He sees you and I through the eyes of grace. And that sight moves Jesus to act with grace. Grace that doesn't demand, but grace that offers. Grace that loves the person instead of judging the circumstance. Grace that loves people, that loves us so much that it meets us exactly where we are. But it's also a grace that loves us too much to leave us there. These are the eyes of grace. This is how Jesus sees this world. How about you? Is this how you see others? Do you see them through the eyes of grace? So today we celebrate the Reformation, right? 95 theses nailed to a, to a church door in Wittenberg, right? See, the church had lost its way. We celebrate the fact that the church had lost its way, and the eyes of grace have grown cloudy. We don't really don't celebrate that part, though. We celebrate the fact that the eyes of a young monk were opened, opened to grace, to God's scandalous grace once again, opened the eyes of grace that he might bring to the church once again God's scandalous grace for people to see for people to grab hold of for this world to be enamored by and captured by this is what we remember this is what we celebrate that was over 500 years ago how is the church's vision today how's your vision today throughout this series we've been talking about what makes grace not just amazing but what makes grace so scandalous and scandalous can be defined in this way as being indignant or bewildered by a flagrant violation of propriety morality or religious opinion so if you've been paying attention that certainly describes God's grace to those who have yet to be hammered by it to those who don't can't or won't see others through the eyes of grace. For those people, it is a violation of propriety, morality, and religious opinion to associate with sinners. To those people, it is a violation to show unconditional love. To those people, it is a violation not to demand a good track record before offering for forgiveness. To those people, it is a violation to risk one's reputation, one's station, one's time, or one's resources if there's no assurance of receiving anything in return. For those people who have yet to be enamored by God's grace, His grace is scandalous. and It's a violation of all that is proper and right. Yet to those who've experienced God's grace in Jesus Christ, to those who have experienced what God has given us in his one and only Son, if that's you, to those people, to you and to I, I, to you and to me, if you've experienced, if you believe that the death that Jesus died, he died for you, if you believe that all of your sins have been forgiven and left to die in the tomb when Jesus walked out of there alive again, walking out of there as the assurance and the promise that one day you too will walk out of the tomb alive. If you believe that, if you believe that the grace of God found in Christ alone through faith has transformed you from sinner to saint in God's eyes, then it's time for you. It's time for you to start seeing this world through the eyes of grace. It's time for you and me to open our eyes and to start seeing this world, to start seeing our coworkers and our classmates, our friends and our families and our neighbors, and the next stranger you meet on the street. It's time for us to start seeing them through the eyes of grace. This world is dying for us to see them through the eyes of grace. And if we do that, if we manage to do that, To see this world 
through the eyes of grace, just imagine what a scandal that will be. That's probably enough for today.